of anybody doing a fiberglass raceway in their apartment. <laughs> no, I mean, no. Forget if you like what you see, subscribe and hit the bell. What's up, reefers? Welcome back to another episode of Zolotank Boys. In this episode, guess what we're talking about? This crazy hidden gem. So, crazy cool, cool story about how we ended up here. And we're gonna interview Sean, he works at Worldwide Corals. Who, incidentally, he happens to be Hector's neighbor. Who would have thought? We're gonna talk about A, how they met, B, this crazy, crazy setup, guys. You're not gonna believe all the crazy fire that's in here. This is a mixed reef set up for grow out with all the good, cool technology that's going on now. You're in for a ride. Let's have Sean come in and then we'll get this thing started. So I'm here with Sean from Worldwide Coral. How are you doing, Sean? Hey, what's up, man? We're gonna dive into this tank and this tank is insane. But before we get too crazy into this tank, you're Hector's neighbor. I am, I am. Uh, Hector and I have been living near each other or next door to each other for a couple of months now. So how did you guys meet? Was it just, you guys just happened to run into each other? Or how, how'd that happen? My girlfriend was walking downstairs and said she saw a guy with a worldwide coral shirt on. And, uh, didn't realize that uh, it was him at first. I'd been to the store at one point and uh, it didn't click. Uh, I think it was the second time you guys came uh, that I realized the uh, complex. Talk to me a little bit about this system. So for starters, how many gallons do we have here? So it's a 120 gallon, eight foot by two foot by 12 inches deep uh, fiberglass raceway. Uh, you see them a lot, I like on the coral farm and the white corals. I was just gonna say that. It reminded me of kind of like farm. Yeah, style. yeah, so the very first time I saw their farm, uh, it, 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 it really stuck with me what they were doing and how they were growing them out. And uh, I just wanted to do it, so I went, did away with my glass tank and found a guy selling a couple of fiberglass raceways. Here we are. So here's what's crazy, guys. Hector lives in the same complex. Hector had a tank out and he had no tank. So when I came in and I saw this behemoth, I was, dude, you don't understand, I was blown away. So, what kind of lights are you running? So it is three Ecotech Marine Radeon Gen 4 Pros. Um, they do a good job. They're set to about 55% intensity, I think, right now. Somewhere around there. Pretty low. Uh, there's a lot of soft coral in there. Not, not too much uh, sticks. Are you thinking of upgrading to the G5s, or do you think you're pretty set with these? Uh, for now, I'll, ro I'll roll with these for now. Um, I I'm not against getting them in the future. Uh, Things are pretty happy with what's going on here now. Maybe when I set the second one up, I'll get the G5 over that. Okay, we're gonna take a really nice in detail look. Um, I see you have a custom stand, um, which is seems pretty intricate. Talk to me a little bit about that. It's it's really not. And you built this? Yeah, I did build this. It's uh, it's it's probably overbuilt. It, it could pull a lot more than what's on the top. Of it. Okay. Uh, a lot of people. We're on the second floor. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people. I wouldn't put this much weight up here, but if you know what you're doing, you know which way the doors are running. It's not good. Really so, uh, how difficult was it getting it up here, if any at all? Well, building it up here was the tricky part. Oh, uh, okay. I had to, smart. smart. <laughs> I had to run a saw and vacuum up sawdust uh, off the carpet. It was uh, my girlfriend didn't like it. Yeah. To say the least. <laughs> all right. So we have the stand. I see you built these hangers essentially for the lights. Pretty cool. Um, how how tall are they lifted above the tank? Do you have any kind of so idea? So they're, they're 28 inches above the water. Um, the wood that I had laying around. Yeah. Um, 28 sounds good, so that's where we're at. No, dude, I love it. So I see in the bottom, you have this nice sub setup. Um, and I believe you have the tablet. Um, is that, that's for the Apex? Yeah, it runs the Apex. That is a uh, trigger system CR44. Okay. Sump, uh, the Sapphire edition. Uh, it has a Reef Octo 150 okay, I see that. Ringo. We got the Vectra Pump. Yes. Uh, battery backup, that's that's key in Florida. Uh, of course. Yes. Power. Need battery backup. And okay, then, there we go. I see your dosing. Yeah, dosing with the Apex system dose. Neptune system dose. Um, it's a good system. I like it. So Let's see what else we're looking at. So I see you have the skimmer. Now you just did a water change before we got here. Yes, I did. So this is really nice, really nice and clean. So kudos. You got your filter something. Now are we running any media in here? Uh, just a bag of carbon. It's tucked away underneath this ledge right here by the heaters with just a simple bag of PRS carbon. Now let's talk a little bit about flow because I see three controllers back there. 
So there are two MP10s on the far right hand side of the system and one MP40 on the left hand side of the system. Okay. I usually just leave them set to repress mode. Hey, I actually had a question as a cameraman. Have you had any issues with flooding? <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah, yeah, I actually have. I have flooded this place uh, once already. <laughs> it's uh it was maybe 50 gallons. I, I went <laughs> I went to work and uh, left the RO running and I didn't uh, have a float. The RO? Yeah, I left the RO running. I came home like maybe six hours later. Yeah. And there was a lot of water downstairs. Uh, thankfully the kids downstairs were cool and nice and uh, they were willing to work with me. And I got it all cleaned up. Uh, no harm, no foul, but it, it, it could have been way worse. So there are safeguards in place now. Okay. To, uh, to make sure that doesn't happen again. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about this setup? What do you love about this setup? Uh, I think the, the fact that nobody else really has it, and, uh, that I know of other than like the, the worldwide coral guys themselves on the farm. I don't know of anybody doing a uh, uh, fiberglass raceway. Of course. I'm not. I haven't seen that. In their apartment. <laughs> no, I mean, I, what, when I saw this, my, my jaw dropped. Um, so 120 up top, 40 in the bottom. So, so you're talking, you know, you mentioned maybe going bigger next time. So are you flirting with the idea of replacing this or getting an additional one? I actually already own a second one. When I, when I purchased this, there were two for sale. One of them uh, isn't as nice, isn't as in good shape, but it can definitely hold water and do the job. So I think my next step would be just a second one of these. Uh, someday when I get a house, apartments uh, will be a thing of the past. I will give it this place and I can fun everything together. Okay, okay. So leave any questions in the bottom, in the comments, any questions about the setup. We're gonna talk about the corals. This is a mixed reef. So here you have everything from SPS, LPS, Zoanthids. I'm gonna talk about the livestock in a little bit as well. This tank is insane, guys. So let's dive in and take a look at this tank in more detail. So talk to me. What type of corals, A, do you have in here? And which ones are your favorite? Okay, so we all know it's a mixed reef. We've gone over that already. Uh, it's hard to pick a favorite. Uh, some of them, some of my favorites are the oldest ones. They're not necessarily like a high end or whatever, but like the Digitata. That was one of the very first pieces that I bought. Um, I've given away so much of that stuff, and you still see how much I have. Uh, another one is uh, probably the Plenty Jawbreaker. That's yeah, I saw that when there. I first came in. Let's take a good shot of that right back there. So the camera doesn't do it justice, just how much red, and even, I see green on that. Yeah, there's a few specks of green in there. Uh, that's one of my favorite pieces. Uh, I'm on a, I'm on a A-can and Ghani kick right now, so. Okay, so talk to me about that. Which ones are the, the craziest Ghanis that you feel like you have in here right now? Because I've seen a couple crazy pieces in there. So I've been cooking the red one for a while, as you can see, the one on the bottom. That thing is, uh, is beautiful. Just a uh, simple red, uh, maybe neon red Ghani, I guess. Guys, the camera doesn't do this coral justice. It's literally like super vibrant and it's a very decent size. Another thing is uh, the Cyphastria. I, I like Cyphastria, um, the, the Bizarro. Uh, yep, I see that big piece right there. Get a nice little glimpse of that. How long have you been growing that piece out for? Uh, maybe like three years. So another one of my favorites is the Australian Gold. Um, it's right down there. I like that piece. It's a, uh, I think it's two heads by now, somewhere around there. Uh, super bright, uh, always a crowd pleaser. Now guys, take a look at his torch garden. So that's that's an incredible piece, but he also has a whole bunch of other really nice torch corals on that rock. Yeah, the, the neon yellow, I, I believe is the, the one in the top. And then the last one is the blue and gold torch. Uh, I haven't seen that around much. Uh, I think that's like four or five heads by now. What's this one right here? I think it's a pink tip octospawn. Uh, I've had it for a couple of years. Uh, now do you know if that one's Indonesian, Australian? It is, and I, I had it, like, I, I acquired it right after the band went into effect, so. Um, so you did pretty good? Yeah, happy to have it in my stable. All right, so real quick, let's go up and take a look at that Euphilia garden. Because look at all the colors in that. I'm a big Euphilia fan. So I see you have some hammers, you got some frog spawn. Yeah, I believe the one in the center they're calling uh, the frammer, uh, even. Oh, I can see that. Uh, it's like, uh, 
I don't know if you guys are catching this, but under it, you have a two-header Australian hammer? Or, or I believe that's an Indo gold oh, branching like Indo. hammer. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Let's look at that. How long have you had that piece for? Uh, I just got that in uh, in Chicago, actually, at, at Rap Chicago. Guys, we can't forget about the mushroom. These mushrooms. Look at the colors on that. Now, what would you say is the key to getting the shrooms to be so large? Uh, I should take it back up so we get a nice little glance. We can see how big these shrooms are. Look at my hand. Guys, those mushrooms are at least this big. I would say a steady diet of, uh, of coral food and coral aminos and water changes. I can't stress water changes enough. Okay, so you mentioned something that's crucial there. Um, you, he mentioned diet. So I see we have some nutrition here for the fish. What do you feed your reef? What, what would you say is it's the, the diet, the source of this? So everyone has their own uh, mixture. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm no different. I, I, I think LRS Reef Frenzy is good. And um, uh, Reef Nutrition Oyster Feast. Uh, I use both those products. I just mix them up in a cup and feed them daily. Uh, right around like your cocktail. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I broadcast feed the tank. I don't really spot feed anything. Um, and I don't usually turn the flow down um, while they're feeding. I want to mix up in the tank. I'll turn okay. it. So you mentioned amino acids. What amino's do you like to feed? Right well, is, uh, coral amino's right now. Coral, you do that daily? Uh, every other day. I, I see you have some prepared here. Yeah, we're ready to feed. All right, guys, let's do this. Now I see we have some livestock. Talk to me a little bit about what kind of livestock you have in your reef. I see it's very light. So you must be running a really clean system. Yeah, so I think uh, I think I run my system too clean actually. Yeah. Yeah, that, that might be part of the problem uh, with my zoanthids. I, I, I don't really, I'm not really... Uh, You're not a zoo tank boy? I'm not a zoo tank boy. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Talk to me about the livestock. What do, what do we have here? Well, the livestock consists of one hippo tank. I've uh, been around for about three years. Yep, I see him right around there. Uh, currently darting around the tank collecting food. Uh, I have a snowflake clown in here somewhere. I don't even know what's a snowflake clown. <laughs> I'm not even sure what this. The snowflake, the Wyoming whites, the bullet, they're all so similar. But I, I, see, I saw him a second ago. Oh, he's down there. You got him? Okay. There he is. And then there's a flame fin to mini tang in here. He's underneath that frag rack. Uh, he doesn't come out much, but he is in here. So we'll take your word for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there he is. That's the first time I've seen him. Maybe he's a shy little fella, so he just learned that colony right there. There he goes. Wow. All right, Sean, so a couple questions. What coral do you not have that you're looking to get? Maybe you're missing, you've been hunting for it for some time. What coral would that be? Okay, so that's an easy answer. Uh, I've had this coral a few times. I've not been successful in keeping it. It's a, it's a one that everybody likes. Uh, it's a, the Walt Disney anchor coral. Oh. So I've had that coral three times now and um, not been able to keep it successfully. So. I know it's easy for some people, zoanthids are easy for yeah, some people. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that one seems to be slippery for me to keep right now. That's interesting. So any of our viewers who have a Walt Disney Acro, leave a comment below. Let us know what's your secret, right? Maybe we can figure it out and throw some Walt Disney. All the crazy coals. I see you have an OG bounce mushroom. I mean, you work at Worldwide Coral, so I think that's kind of like a staple. But you got some crazy colonies that um, we haven't talked a lot about. So talk to me about that beach bum. Um, it's a beach bum Montipora, and that thing is insane. Yeah, uh, I personally haven't seen one growing out that big. Uh, maybe Jason himself has one, uh, but other than that, I would say it's roughly the size of a saucer, maybe, you know, a saucer plate, whatever. Um, the red sign arena underneath it is one of the newest additions to the tank. So that red sign arena, let's take a look at that real quick. 
It's uh, nowhere near as, as, as big as it could be. The lights are dimming now, but uh, uh, it's one of my favorite pieces. So going back to the beach room, how long did it take you to grow it that big or did you get the colony that big? I've had it for just over three years. I bought wow. it as a, maybe a half inch piece. So is it safe to say it's a slow grower? Yeah, that's yeah. A, yeah that's it's insane. notoriously a slow grower. And you've never fragged it? Never, never. Wow. The, the frag is originally, so the piece that you see right down in there is the frag, the original blue frag. God, that's insane. So to the left of that, you're gonna see a really nice big um, red, pinkish, with some green in the center, Rhodactus. Yeah, uh, I've heard multiple names for, for these mushrooms. Uh, we'll just go with the forest fire Rhodactus, I guess. Um, very cool, uh, definitely a, a piece that people always ask about when they see my tank. Now, did you get that as a whole colony or as a one shroom and you built it? Just up? one shroom. One God, shroom. that's insane. Yeah, and it, uh, it has been happy in here ever since. How long has how long have you had that piece? Uh, a couple of years. So I got that a couple of years ago. Um, I don't even think the store is there anymore. Okay, okay. So how long have you been at Worldwide Cool? So going back to that, to, to, to World uh, World I World think World. they got me, they, they offered me a job in July of 2019. Okay. Okay, you love it, everything's cool? Yeah, it's a, it is a, a dream job for sure. Uh, definitely glad to be a part of the team there. Um, Vic and Lou. Shout out to Worldwide Coral. Yeah, great guys. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Do they know you have this crazy setup at home or they don't know? Are we are we an exclusive? They do know I have it. Have they ever laid their eyes on it? I, I don't believe they have. Wow. Okay, okay, so this will be surprising for them. Um, so, Worldwide Core, everybody out there, come check this out. Check this setup. It is insane. You're definitely going to be blown away like Zotink boys are. So, anything else you want to say to the viewers? Any any, any other piece? Any tips? Um, just uh, do your water changes. Uh, I can't stress it enough. Like I said earlier, water changes 10% weekly. Um, it'll be all right. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Zotink boys. Till next time, Zotink boys out.